Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Alan Dulles, and this is my review of S for Sex, S for Secrets. This is the first movie and first movie review of 2015. Happy f New Year. S for Sex, S for Secrets is directed by Jill Wong with one L, and it's a guy, who also directed See You in YouTube and Trick or Cheat. He didn't write S for Sex, S for Secrets. Patrick Kong did. He also produced it. Patrick Kong has written and directed some movies that I actually enjoyed, like A Secret Between Us and Love is the Only Answer. But he's also responsible for a number of movies that I really didn't care for. And to be honest, this new movie is one of them. S for Sex, S for Secrets tells the story of two married couples who are having problems sleeping with each other. They don't have problems sleeping with other people, though. And that weird dichotomy is emblematic of why I couldn't really connect with these characters or this movie. I love my wife so much that I'll sleep with any other woman who'll let me. I really love my husband and I want us to have a baby, so I'm gonna make sex tedious, infuriating, and impossible. Don't get me wrong, you can actually make a movie about people with those kinds of contradictions, but it's gonna have to be a lot better written, directed, and acted than S for Sex, S for Secrets. So let me get this straight. This woman tells her cousin something very, very personal about her husband, but she doesn't want to tell her husband that her cousin is giving birth, even though Obviously, he might have noticed. People that stupid shouldn't breed. Of all the things a woman would want to keep secret from her husband, is her cousin's imminent birthing really one of them? On what fucking planet? Apparently the same planet where everybody's cheating on everybody else, but yet none of them have the intelligence to use a screen lock on their phone. I know that planet, it's called Uranus. I understand that movie narratives have to rely on misunderstandings, but simple, stubborn refusal to speak to someone is not misunderstanding. S for sex, S for secrets, is 90 minutes long and it has people in it that pretend to be other people and there's a story but it's like a sample movie this is what a movie does and this is what a movie looks like and, and you put music on it but there's really nothing new or inventive or stylish about it it's just what a movie's supposed to look and sound like and the structure and presentation of it are so pedestrian that i swear to god through most of the movie i just kept hearing can you say that a film has bad grammar? It was really weird how at one point so many characters from so many different parts of the film all ended up in the same place. It was almost as if there was a script. I've been told that local movies have flashbacks because local audiences need them. Well, apparently it's getting worse instead of better because in S for Sex, S for Secrets, something happens and less than a minute later we're shown a flashback of it i think that's a record one of the other flashbacks could flatteringly be called exhaustive if i didn't want to be flattering i could call it infuriatingly tedious but i'd rather save that for the third flashback you know i should be fair i sincerely do appreciate and like some of the things about this movie there's a lot of relatively graphic sex scenes, and that's a refreshing change from the usual chastity of local film. While I didn't necessarily want to see Philip Kung Ho Man in sex scenes, he's probably my favorite local character actor, and I was happy because he gets to do sex scenes with Gina Ho and a couple other random hoes who might not be named Ho. Uh, but speaking of Ho's. Gina Ho honestly was the biggest and most pleasant surprise of S for Sex, S for Secrets. She gets a chance to act in this movie and she does it really well. She also gets to have a character with some depth and detail for a change. She was impressive and so if there's really any reason to watch this movie, she's it. The only other reason might be to watch Jessica C talk about her pet penis. You know what? My opinion about this movie really doesn't matter. It's probably gonna make a lot of money, and young people in Hong Kong seem to enjoy these movies. I'd even venture to say that Patrick Kong probably isn't even really all that insulted by my chronic abuse. And last night, at the premiere of S for Sex, S for Secrets, he actually introduced himself to me and told me that he recognized me as the guy on YouTube. If I wasn't such a sociopath, I might actually feel bad about having said some of the things I've said. But he introduced himself before the movie, so even if I'd realized it and felt bad, then I would have watched S for Sex, S for Secrets, and I'd have absolved myself and just gotten mad all over again. The bottom line is this. He spends his time directing Gina Ho in sex scenes. I, on the other hand, am here with you. If you want to watch S for Sex, S for Secrets, 
go watch it in the cinema. If not, wait till it's available for rental online, or you could even wait and buy an actual disc. In the description, there's a link that will be updated when the film is released to home video. Please don't watch movies illegally. If you enjoyed my review, please leave me a comment. If you didn't enjoy the review, please leave me a comment. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. That way you'll get to see all the new videos as soon as they're released. Thank you very much for watching and happy 2015. I didn't think anybody could ever make me wish that a movie was directed by Wilson Chin. But I was wrong.